Hey, New Life Church. What brings joy to the heart of God? What is it in your life that brightens the day of I am our God? Um, we're going to dive into that, but I want us to understand where chapter 15 falls in kind of the overarching story of 1 Samuel to 2 Samuel. Like, hope you can see this. Right? So if you look at the story of um, 1 Samuel through 2 Samuel, what you see is the rise and fall of two kings. You see the rise of Saul and then the fall of Saul. Right, We're very familiar with that. Then in the midst of fall, Saul's fall, we see the rise of David, but we also know that David also makes some pretty significant mistakes and also sees some consequences in his kingdom. And so right now in the sections we're getting ready to talk about over the next few days, it's right here where Saul loses power and David begins to rise in power. So I just want you to kind of know where this falls. And so, but the question we're trying to answer today is what brightens the heart of God? Saul thought he knew. And he thought that that's why he would always be king. And so Samuel comes to Saul and says, this is what God is asking you to do go and strike Amalek. Take out the king, take out the city. And he says, just raise it. Just take it all out. Leave nothing behind. There is no plunder. There are, there are no spoils. Just take it all out. So Saul goes. God gives him victory. And rather than obeying the Lord, Saul um, keeps the king alive, and Saul um, saves all the livestock. But to kind of justify it in his mind, um, Saul uh, is like, we're gonna throw, we're gonna sacrifice these animals. Now, the thing you gotta understand is that <laughs> there's a couple of different sacrifices. Some completely consume the animals, while others um, keep part of the animals for a celebration, um, a worship feast, if you will. My suspicion is that it's the latter that Saul has chosen because then the people would love him. And we do see through the story that Saul um, tends to curry the favor of people. Well, Samuel shows up and <clears throat> when he arrives, it simply says this in 1513. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said to him, Blessed be you to the Lord. I don't know if that's how he said it. He says, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, and this is awesome, I love sarcasm. I wish I had a highlighter for my Bible that just marked sarcasm. Because Samuel's response is classic sarcasm. He says, oh, what then? is this bleeding of sheep in my ear and the lowing of oxen that I hear. So basically he's like, man, if you obeyed, why do I still hear Amalekite livestock? And here's the other thing that Saul, that Samuel begins to do is he says, hey, God regrets making you king. God regrets making you king. Verse 19, he says, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And so um, as Samuel is drawing this to a conclusion, um, this is what he says in verse 22. He says, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen is better than the fat of rams. You see, Saul, he thought that what God delighted in was sacrifice. That what God delighted in was the flesh of animals and the fat from around the meat. And so he thought, it's okay if I bend this commandment of God because I'm going to make it okay 
by this sacrifice. And Samuel says, no, that's not the way it works. Verse 23 goes on to say, the reason that it's better to obey and to listen than to offer sacrifice is this, for, that means because, that means this is the reason that I just told you that. Rebellion is as the sin of divination. Divination, divination means seeking power from other gods. And God's like, listen, rebellion, it's just like that. It's just when you're in rebellion, you're the other God. He goes on to say, and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry, assuming you know the heart of God rather than leaning in and listening, examining his commandments and the scriptures. He says, presumption is just like iniquity and idolatry. Your ignorance of the scriptures, of what I said, it's like the sin of idolatry. He goes, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. <clears throat> so I think we have to sit in that for a moment. That we can't assume we know the direction and the desire of God unless we are plugged into the scriptures because we hold the scriptures in such high regard and it's because I recognize the foulness of my heart. I recognize how easily and quickly I can just veer off and just go my own direction. And if I'm not consistently, committedly plugged into the scriptures that God has left me to anchor my convictions, my heart can come up with some crazy things and call it God's path, God's commands, and God's truth when it's not. And so I am staying connected in this book daily in this book because I have confidence that the Holy Spirit can speak to me through it and he can correct error and lead me along the path. And so some questions for us to ponder today. How are you paying attention to and consistently staying connected to this book? Something to think about. Another thing um, you might ponder is this. What do you think God wants more than your attention and your obedience? Uh, right? Like you might think, oh, God wants my money more. And so as long as I'm giving the tithe and offerings, it's all good. Well, it's not. No, God wants your attention your obedience. You might think, you know, what God wants more than my attention and my obedience is national obedience. So I'm going to care more about politics than I am about my personal and community relationship with God. And I'm going to get more fired up about politics than I am about what God wants to say to me through his word. Maybe it's a pretty shell. And the thing you're concerned about more than actual attention and obedience is I just want to look good to the people around me. That's what Saul wanted. Even in verse 24, he says this, Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words, right? Like he gets it. I messed up. I broke the law. And the reason is because I feared the people and obey, obe feared the people and obeyed their voice. Down in verse 30, he says this, I have sinned <laughs> yet Honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may bow before the Lord your God. Saul wasn't concerned about obedience. He was concerned about looking good. Maybe that's what we're concerned about. And the last question to ponder is this. Where do you partially follow God's guidance? Maybe it's because you don't fully understand the scriptures and it's confusing. And so you're like, eh, I'm just going to let that go. Maybe it's because you know, but it's too hard or uncomfortable to obey, or maybe you partially obey for like the reason Saul did, which is I'm just concerned about how people, I'm going to look to people if I obey this commandment of God. So let's ponder those things. Um, and so, and let's lean in to understanding that what God really wants is our attention and our obedience. Have a great day, y'all.